figured I'll give you guys a quick little overview of what's going on in this back garden since I've been talking about it too. These are all my onions here. These are chives and these I believe are bunching onions that I actually sowed last year that came back. So that's really cool. And then in here I have some celery and a few cabbage that I had left over. I just threw them in here to see how those would go. This is some dinosaur kale and some of the scarlet kale that were little the last time you guys saw it. So it's doing really great. I'm just breaking off the little flowering heads on them and giving them to my chickens. As you can tell, they know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then this chard has pretty much all just bolted, which again is fine and par for the course. Uh, to be quite honest, I've just only been giving this chard to my girls anyway because they just enjoy it so much and I enjoy the eggs that they give me so <laughs> it's mutually beneficial. Just some little florets. They love the little heads, flowers. Usually they jump up to this thing to get them. There you go. Um, and then these are some more cabbage. I think this stuff up here is the storage cabbage. Slightly damaged from cabbage moths, but really not bad at all. And I think these ones back here are the Danish ball cabbage. Doing okay. Some more dinosaur kale back there. Um, I don't know if you can see those back there, but those are some dwarf, Tom Thumb dwarf beans. And they're, they're just not doing great. I've gotten a pot off of each of those. I don't know if they got too shaded or what. This is broccoli. It's still growing. I think this is the purple broccoli. No, this is the Dicicio broccoli. Are these ones, and I think the purple broccoli are these ones back here. And they haven't bolted yet. I'm shocked. This is actually the broccoli that Blanche ate, <laughs> um, or she scratched up in that one video. And this one is actually doing better than this one is. Those are doing good. I have some carrots growing in here. And these I actually started, um, I used pelletized carrots this year. Um, and what that is, is it's a carrot seed that they've actually put like a coating on. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with carrot seeds, but they are super, super minuscule and they're really hard to germinate and grow. And so when they put this coating on it, it makes it so you can actually grab it and plant it deep in the soil. Not really deep, but you can actually put it in the soil. Carrot seeds, you kind of have to like sprinkle over the top and dust over the top because they are so small because remember you want to plant a seed twice as deep as it is wide so with a pellet you can actually do that with the carrot seeds i just wasn't getting a great germination rate and even with these i still had rodent damage but i have a few growing here and i did another row here but it looks like i got most of those got eaten a few are coming through um and then this is the blue curled scotch, some more dinosaur kale, and some more scarlet kale there. I'll have to break those little buds off there. Um, here I planted 
along this arched trellis, I'm gonna have all my cucumbers growing. This is my bait, my bait alpha cucumber. And I didn't have real success with growing this last year, but you know, every year's different. We'll see if this one, this year, it does anything different. Um, I also have some of the Chinese celery growing in here. Um, and then I have a market more cucumber back there. And I have some Malabar spinach growing there and that'll grow up over the trellis. I have another one back there that'll grow up this trellis. And that is a spinach that is heat tolerant. Like I've mentioned before, I've never been really successful at growing spinach here. It just gets too hot too fast, but this stuff will grow throughout the heat. And it tastes a little different, but um, I'm excited to try that this year. And then over on this side, this is my National Pickling Cucumber that is rocking. Got a little damage on it because um, I got a little neglectful with it and I didn't quite water it the way that I should have. Uh, cucumbers are notorious for needing lots and lots and lots of water. And we actually went out of town for a couple of days and it stressed out my cucumbers quite a bit. You can see my straight eight kind of suffered a little bit too. Um, it also looks like it got eaten by some bugs down there. So that's doing okay. But definitely this national pickling is rocking it. Um, I'm getting excited because I can see bulbing of my onions in here. These are my Texas granos, I think, over here. Yeah. Uh, these here are, or maybe these are my Texas granos. These ones are, oh, Spanish Utah. That's what these ones are on this far side. And then these are my Texas granos, which makes sense because those are bulbing up pretty well. And here's another one here that's bulbing up. These should be the the big onions. Uh, these ones are my shallots, my Zabrun shallots growing here. And then I have one, oh my, something came in here. Huh. Critters, gotta love them. And you can see dug right next to my Walla Walla. I think it actually dug up my tag for my Walla Wallas. Well, I found my tag. Um, whatever that was definitely dug it up, but it doesn't look like it's disturbed the root base of this onion because I just have these couple of Walla Walla onions here that are doing okay. And then you can see this wall of garlic that I have growing here is looking mighty excellent. It's very tall. And I have quite a few scapes coming out here, which if you're not aware, scapes only happen with hardneck varieties of garlic. Um, but you actually want to trim these and because this is actually going to turn into like a flower and take away from the growing of the of the garlic bulb at the bottom. Um, so I'll come out here and I'll take these off and I'm gonna make a pesto out of it. I've also heard that if you, I haven't done this before, but if you like fry them up in a pan with oil and you treat them basically as asparagus. They taste very reminiscent of asparagus. So I'm really excited to do that. I have quite a few of them. Um, you can also make 
herbed butter with it. It'll have like a garlicky flavor. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try doing that as well. So we like herbed flavored butters. But there, there is a lot in here. And I, I reached my hand, I, I dug down around to see if I could feel the shoulders of the garlic, which is basically like the top mound, the biggest, fattest part of a garlic clove, just to get an idea of how big that bulb was. And they were bulbing up quite nicely. Um, they should be ready in the next couple of weeks. You can see that they're already starting to show some signs of browning here. And that's how you can tell when garlic is ready, when the green of the leaves starts to brown or they start to fall over. That's when you know it's ready to harvest a garlic bulb. You can also, also always just remove, you can pull one garlic or two garlic to see the size of the bulb. And if you're not happy, you can just continue to let the rest of them grow. And like I said, I have about 60 bulbs of garlic in there. So if I, you know, if I think that they're ready, I'll probably pull one or two in different areas because obviously they're getting a slightly different degrees of sunlight. Like that back corner doesn't get as much sunlight as this front corner does. So this one might be ready where that one is not. Um, and then I still have, you know, another 57 <laughs> that could keep growing. So that will be coming up real soon. And maybe I'll show you guys what I do with those scapes too, because that's going to be real fun and delicious. But that's the progress. Oh, and I planted that Malabar spinach back there. And I planted another one right up here to grow right up along the top of this trellis. So I got a lot of things growing here. A lot of promise. Ooh, check this out. These are so pretty. This is my blackberry bush. And they're blooming. How pretty. That's so exciting. So this is really great. really encouraging to see we might be getting some blackberries to actually grow this year that's great I just put this in last year and so it had pretty much the whole summer to establish so that's exciting you can see my blueberries here these are going really great and this is North Country Blueberry. And this, this plant is my oldest blueberry plant. It's gotta be, I don't know, five years old or maybe older, I don't know. Um, I grow my blueberries in pots, as you can see. And that's because they like really sandy soil and really good drainage. Um, so they just were, I, I had this in the ground actually right about here somewhere and it just was struggling. Um, so I put them in the pots with sand and then I've also been fertilizing them quite a bit with some organic fertilizers and it's doing much better. So that one is giving us lots of potential blueberries. This one is starting to set some fruit looking like it's going to give us quite a few just not as far along as that one is and then this one here is now kind of getting choked out I think I'm gonna to have to move it over next to its friend because as you can tell my raspberries have decided to squeeze it out the plant is doing really well it's very healthy but I don't see any blossoms on it so I think I'm gonna pull that out of there I think it's just kind of getting drown out by the new growth of the raspberry this year but the raspberries are going 
bonkers and you can see we got lots of new growth on the raspberries all this in between this was just one plant here and one plant there and now we got all that extra growth there all this growth in the middle and then it's stretching more over here and these are just a um, I think these are heritage raspberries and then this one here I got from my uncle as well as that blackberry and this is a uh, black raspberry I believe it's like a purple dark purple raspberry so those are fun um, I took just like a little cutting of that and it survived uh, the year but obviously did not flower and then this year I, I left like you can see I, I leave the dead um, growth from last year up for the new growth to come in and I did that with this one but it was just one single stem and it just didn't hold up over the winter um, so it ended up like falling over or possibly my chickens knocked it over or something like that but the plant still survived and started to sprout up but then and the chickens love coming in here and like you can see right there they were digging up in there because there's lots of bugs in all these wood chips um, and one of them just lopped the top of this off and I was devastated so I put this chicken wire around it just to kind of deter them from injuring it. I don't think it's going to flower this year, but it might surprise me. I'm just happy to see that it's still there and it's got potential. So that's fun and exciting. And then I'm leaving this space open, hopefully for some melons that I have growing inside. So everything's looking real bountiful and happy. Thank you guys for stopping by today and joining in on our journey here at Bourbon's Living. We'll catch you on the next one.